Greetings, dear friends. I present to your attention the most common malfunctions and breakdowns that occur on the Hyundai Elantra. There are no particular problems with the transmission mechanics. The CV joint resource is moderate. After 150,000 mileage, there are increased backlash and noise, but there are no difficulties with replacement. Non original parts of good quality are available. Internal tripods are generally more reliable than external hinges. The only caveat is that if you look for replacements specifically for, uh, for Elantra, then the choice is not very large, and brains are not encouraging. The situation is a little better if you look at analogs for sole and seats. For them, there are JKN speed and parts at a price only slightly higher than for Chinese brands. The 5-speed manual gearbox of the M56 CF1 series, which was paired with 1.6 engines, doesn't please with outstanding reliability. The reason is that the best quality bearings and weak oil seals and the input shaft oil seal requires disassembly of the unit for replacement. The differential is also weak. With dirty oil and heavy load, it's very likely that the satellites will stick to the axle with the subsequent destruction of the box body. The units are inexpensive to repair, usually everything ends with the replacement of bearings and oil seals, sometimes synchronizers, less often the gears of the fifth gear change. But if you drive a hauling box for a long time, the most likely, there will be Stalingrad inside, and there will be nothing to restore due to damage to the case. The choice of used units is large, because this box that is on most Hyundai Kia cars, when 1.6 engines, including Solaris, but it is difficult to find a completely live one with low mileage. The incipient transmission hole can be heard from the passenger compartment on the move, therefore it's strongly recommended to test it on the lift with suspended wheels. Automatic transmission of the A4 CF2 series are noticeably more reliable than mechanics, with standard oil change intervals of 50-60,000 km after 150,000 mileage. The weld body will most likely require attention, but often everything is limited only to flushing and replacing the line pressure solenoids and blocking the gas turbine engine. With runs of about 200,000, critical wear of the linings of the gas turbine engine and subsequent intensive contamination of the oil in the box is possible. And with prolonged operation on dirty oil, not only the weld body suffers, but also the pump. If the oil doesn't change, sooner or later you will have to change the cover and gears and often the bushings. Alas, many people drive in this mode and sometimes it is easier to buy a slightly second hand, one with a mileage of up to a hundred, prophylactically sort out and deliver than to completely restore an already stopped unit, since there is a choice of used options. If everything is fine with the box, it's recommended to change the oil more often, warm it up longer in winter and drive less. And if the operation is urban plug and or the climate in your region is hot, then an additional external cooling radiator will also come in handy. Most of the cars on our market are equipped with a 1.6 engine with 122 horsepower. This is an old friend of G4 FC, which is also used on Solaris. The motor is simple and very efficient, it uses a version with one phase regulator. The design is typical for Asian engines in the 2000s. An aluminum block cast iron liners, a long stroke design, a timing chain, phase regulators, a plastic intake, distributed injection and a very compact design, made as technologically as possible. Typical problems have long been known. Possible early wear of the timing chain and scuffing of the piston group, usually associated with wear of the catalyst and the design of the piston skirt. But as practice shows, not all G4 FCs are equally useful. The Elantra version surprisingly has a longer piston group and timing chain resource than the Solaris version. Seizures here are a rarity, with runs up to 200-250,000. The oil appetite of the engines is almost absent, limited to a liter per 10,000 run. With runs of the order of 200,000, the catalyst is usually most intact, it's just beginning to crumble, and it's surprising that even the timing chain for this run is also usually still in good condition. With runs over 300, there are cars without major repairs, but without serious problems and with a minimal oil appetite and not from a taxi. The reasons can be quest at Maybe Elantra relies on motors not assembled in Shandong, China, but in Hassan, Korea. Maybe it plays with its lateral radiator in more spacious engine compartment. Maybe a different air filter improves engine performance. Or it's just that runs are less often used on Elantras, which improves statistics. But the fact is obvious. The owner of these machines in general can count on a noticeably greater resource from the motor than Solaris, in the absence of visible changes in the motor itself. Several minor problems can be mentioned. The steel sump on the engine rods sometimes to the point of oil leakage. The rear crankshaft oil seal is weak, 
If the crankshaft ventilation system fails, it often leaks and you can still be left without oil due to the unscrewed oil channel cover in the block of the flywheel side. This problem was eliminated under warranty, but there are chances to get on the car with the problem. Often the craftsmen regularly change the rear oil seal of the crankshaft, but are not able to find a weakened plug. The starter is weak. When replacing for more confident winter starts, you can supply a more powerful analog, for example Bosch 0138017. The 2-liter engine here of the older Beta 2 series is the G4GC, a version with phase control with a power of 143 horsepower. Cast iron block timing belt with a short chain linking their shafts. Phase regulator of an unusual type working as a chain tensioner, similar in design to the used on Volkswagen EA113 engines. The piston group is very reliable. Cars with this motor successfully overcome 350,000 km without overhaul. The owner only has to change the oil and monitor the thermal clearance of the valves. They go away even with runs up to 100,000, quite strongly and are regulated by the selection of the pusher. The engine management system is very simple, which is both good and bad. Good because it's cheap and reliable, bad because self-diagnostic capabilities are severely limited. In case of problems with the power supply or ignition system, no errors will light up, and the emergency mode algorithm can lead to breakdowns of both the catalyst and the engine hardware. Maybe Korean brands in terms of corrosion protection in general are far from European ones, but Elantra HD in particular is painted surprisingly well. And other things begin equal, it outperforms the recently reviewed second-generation Kia Cerato, even despite the younger age of the later. Probably it was not only the quality of the paintwork and the processing of metal and seams that played a role, but also the leaked aerodynamic design. Large radii of curvature also mean lower stresses in the metal and greater resistance to corrosion. Chips of paintwork on the leading edges of the hood and roof and on the arches are found, but not so often and certainly not everywhere at once. The paintworks hold the blow is relatively good and if it is already shabby, then the galvanized coating gives the owner a lot of time to paint over the damage. Chips spread slowly and reluctantly. The furnishings of the interior are simple and reliable. If you are not confused by the design, which was clearly drawn inspired by the salons of Toyota RAV4 and Lexus RX, then you can only find fault with the materials. Everything looks good if the salon is looked after. But micro scratches and ingrated dirt can ruin everything. Both the front panel and door cars do not like dirty people and smokers. The steering wheel gives out the mileage of the car with its head. The skin loses its presentation already by 100,000, and by 150 it peels off almost in pieces. Plastic handlebars hold better, but by the time they run 120-150,000, they wipe themselves to a shine, and they are also afraid of nails and sharp rings. The electrical system as a whole is almost no hassle. The generator has a stable service life of 150-200,000 before the appearance of problems with the wear of the collector and bearings. It also happens that with runs over 250, there are no problems, except over of the brushers and failures of the relay regulator. Even the radiator fans, they are wiring and regulation work fine. The body masses are not made in the best way. In our conditions, at the 10th year of life, they almost certainly no longer provide stable contact, which leads to floating voltage in the onboard network and malfunctions of sensors with consequences ranging from completely harmless deviations in engine operation to problems with the winter starting and excessive fuel consumption. The wiring of the driver's door also fails. The harness with the runs for one and a half hundred thousand can break. Minor breakdowns of the cabin electrics are quite likely. Of the most unpleasant, the bow mentioned problems with the power window and breakdowns of the steering wheel snail. The braking system is simple, no surprises. Inexpected components have not record braking service life of both pads and disc brake routers. A set of pads will pass its 40-50,000 km from a neat driver, and there are enough discs for two or three sets of pads, if you do not abuse primers and puddles. In rear disc brakes, early wear of the guides manifest itself more often than in front ones. After three years of operation, the wedge and lubrication and wear of the anthers only aggravate the situation. In front, anthers and guides are more reliable. They serve quite stable for 8-10 years, if you do not indulge in copper grease. The suspension is quite reliable, McPherson strut front, multi-link rear. 
The components are inexpensive. The main bare parts, bolt joints, wheel bearings, arm bushings are changed separately. If you hear a knock, do not be alarmed. Most likely these are bushings of the anti roll bars. They make themselves felt with noise, even with a slight backlash. The suspension doesn't tolerate full load movement on bad roads, especially the rear one. If drivers operating the car alone or together have serious suspension repairs with runs of 100-150 thousand, then literally several thousand kilometers with three passengers in the back and a full trunk can end up with a complete rear suspension bulkhead and replacement of shock absorbers. The steering with the EUR is quite reliable. Small backlashes and knocks are not a problem, there is nothing to flow. Here is an unsuccessful tightening of the rail is dangerous by wedging, despite the fact that most often the problem is solved by replacing the side bushings. On this information about the problem of Hyundai Elantra 4 is exhausted. If you know more or disagree with what you heard, I'm waiting for you in the comments.